Hello everyone. Welcome to Vijay Sri Tutorials. I'm Aditya from 2018 batch and today we will be discussing about terminal trend. Okay, we will see about pyramidal tract. So, what is generally pyramidal tract? The pyramidal tract is a, what we call as a descending tract, where the fibers are arising from the motor cortex of the brain. It is coming down through the spinal cord and it is innervating the different muscles where the response can be produced. So, pyramidal tract is one of the most important descending tracts of our body. Now, before we see about pyramidal tracts, we must know from where these uh, fibers are originating. It is from the cortex, the brain cortex and what part of the brain cortex? That is the motor cortex. Now, what is motor cortex? The supralateral surface of the brain we have a very prominent sulcus that is a central sulcus and the part anterior to the central sulcus which is present in the frontal lobe that almost uh, a very prominent portion of the posterior part of this frontal lobe is occupied by what we call as a motor cortex. We can see it is present anterior to the central sulcus. And posterior to the central sulcus is what we have the primary somatosensory cortex, which is uh, given as 312. That is primary somatosensory cortex. E4 and 6, that is a motor cortex. So this is present anterior to the central sulcus. It occupies almost the posterior one third of the frontal lobe and we can see this motor cortex is divided uh, further divided into three parts that is primary motor cortex pre-motor area and supplementary motor area okay and this primary motor cortex this is the most important part of the motor cortex central sulcus and anterior right to the gyrus under which is what you call as the pre-central gyrus and this gyrus is a primary motor cortex and there is one gyrus which is present just posterior to the central sulcus that is what we call as the post central gyrus and post central gyrus is what we call as the primary somatosensory cortex okay Abo, e pre central gyrus in the central sulcus and anterior right to gyrus on primary motor cortex so which is given as a broad man's area for now we have these last pyramidal cells of this cortex which is called as uh, cells of beds or bed cells and the bed cells in the axons are in the forms in the pyramidal tract fibers of forms. Now we will see how they are formed. So the whole body, the whole human body is represented in this motor cortex, and we will see about that. The topographical representation of the whole body is given in this motor cortex, and it is unilateral and it is inverted representation. And what do you mean by inverted representation? We will see. And the cella parts of our body a bilateral representation. Okay, upper half of the face, our eyes, our larynx, see, bag up, okay. Bilateral representation. Okay. Now, sir, two hemispheres. In this case, these are the parts of the body. In this how they are seen, we will see later. So, that is about the primary motor cortex, which is the most important motor cortex. That is the pre-central gyrus. That is the first gyrus anterior to the central sulcus, or broad man's area form. Okay. This primary motor cortex. No, come on. We can see. I said the whole human body is topographically represented in the pre-central gyrus. And this topographic representation of the human body in this motor cortex is what we call as a motor homunculus. So, number uh, one, central central portion of it is medially. Medially, and the key parts are represented. We can see the lower part of the body is represented medially, while as we move more, more laterally, the upper parts of the body is being represented. And this is why we say the body is represented in an inverted manner. So, more medially, the lower part of the body is represented while uh, laterally the upper part of the body is being represented and we can see different parts are having different uh, representation so some parts of the body are represented in a very large manner as we can see number our hands our palms our fingers or digits these are i mean fingers these are represented the representation of these parts is larger compared to other parts why because See, uh, palm, we are using it in our daily lives. We have uh, very complicated actions we are doing with these palms. We have to grab stuff, we have to take, we have to pick up something, uh, we have to write, we have to grab something, grab onto something. So, very intricate and very complicated, uh, uh, what we say, uh, actions are required for the 
ഫങ്ഷനിങ് ഓഫ് ദീസ് പാർട്സ് അപ്പൊ കൂടുതൽ മോട്ടോർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ഏത് ഭാഗങ്ങൾക്കാണോ വേണ്ടത് അതിന്റെ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ ലാർജർ ആയിരിക്കും സോ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമുക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ ആംഗിൾ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ ഫുഡിന്റെ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ ഒക്കെ കുറവാണ് പക്ഷെ നമ്മുടെ പാംസിന്റെ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ കൂടുതലാണ് ഫേസിന്റെ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ കൂടുതലാണ് കാരണം കൂടുതൽ ഇന്റർസിക് മോട്ടോർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി വേണ്ട ഭാഗങ്ങൾക്കൊക്കെ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ കൂടുതലായിരിക്കും മോട്ടോർ ഹോമോഗ്ലിസ്റ്റ് സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് അബൌട്ട് ടോപ്പോഗ്രാഫിക്കൽ റെപ്രസെന്റേഷൻ അബൌട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ട്രീ മോട്ടോർ ഏരിയ ദിസ് പാർട്ട് ഇസ് പ്രസന്റ് ആന്റീരിയർ ടു ദ പ്രൈമറി മോട്ടോർ കോട്ടക്സ് എന്നുള്ള ബ്രോഡ്ബാൻഡ് ഏരിയ സിക്സ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ആ കാര്യത്തിൽ അത് പ്രീ മോട്ടോർ ഏരിയ ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് സപ്ലിമെന്ററി മോട്ടോർ ഏരിയ ടുഗദർ വി കെൻ സീറ്റ് ബ്രോഡ്ബാൻഡ് ഏരിയ സിക്സ് അപ്പം പ്രീ മോട്ടോർ ഏരിയ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ സപ്ലിമെന്ററി മോട്ടോർ ഏരിയ രണ്ടും കൂടി ചേർന്നിട്ടാണ് നമുക്ക് കോംപ്ലിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആക്ഷൻസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുക സച്ച് എസ് പൊസിഷണൽ മൂവ്മെന്റ്സ് നമ്മൾ ഇഫ് യു ആർ ടേക്കിംഗ് സംതിങ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ പിക്കിംഗ് അപ്പ് സംതിങ് യു ആർ റൈറ്റിംഗ് വി നീഡ് ഇൻട്രൻസിക് ആൻഡ് വെരി കോംപ്ലിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആക്ഷൻസ് സോ ഓൾ ദീസ് ത്രീ സെന്റേഴ്സ് ആക്ട് ടുഗദർ സോ ദാറ്റ് വി കെൻ പെർഫോം സച്ച് കോംപ്ലിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആക്ഷൻസ് ഓക്കെ നൗ സി വാട്ട് ഇസ് എ ഡിസെൻഡിങ് പാർട്ട് വേ ആസ് ഐ സെറ്റ് ബിഫോർ ഫൈബേഴ്സ് അറൈസിങ് ഫ്രം ദ കോട്ടക്സ് ഓഫ് ദ ബ്രെയിൻ സ്റ്റൺ ആർ ഡിസെൻഡിങ് ഡൗൺവേർഡ്സ് and ending in the spinal cord and this comprises of the descending pathway not only in the spinal cord but uh, most importantly spinal cord le thirunnennullu the cortex inu thodangi vera brain stem le end in the fibers und all these uh, constitute of the descending path adu thodane brain stem inu thirichu spinal cord lotu varuna fibers und cortex inu thirichu spinal cord lotu cortex inu brain stem lotu allengi brain stem inu spinal cord lotu ingane varuna uttri fibers und ellam kodi nammal endu parayum descending pathway nu parayum But traditionally, we can classify these descending pathways into two. There is a pyramidal tract and extra pyramidal tracts. So that's how we traditionally classify these descending pathways. Now we'll see what is a pyramidal tract. Why are these tracts called so? Pyramidal. Why? Because, you know, <clears throat> anteriorly in the medulla, we have two projections, which are the pyramids of medulla. So these fibers are passing through these pyramids. Hence, they are called as pyramidal tract. That's all. അപ്പോൾ വാട്ട് ഇസ് എ പെരുമിനൽ ട്രാക്ട് മോട്ടോർ കോട്ടക്സിൽ നിന്ന് സ്പൈനൽ കോഡിലോട്ട് എൻഡ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഫൈബേഴ്സ് ആണ് അത് ദേ ആർ പാസിങ് ത്രൂ ദ പിരമിഡ്സ് ഓഫ് മെഡുല വിച്ച് ഇസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻറ്റീരിയർലി ഹെൻസ് വി കോളിറ്റ് ആസ് എ പിരമിഡൽ ട്രാക്ട് ന പിരമിഡൽ ട്രാക്സ് കംപ്രൈസസ് ഓഫ് ടു മെയിൻ ട്രാക്സ് ദർ ഇസ് എ കോർട്ടിക്കോ സ്പൈനൽ ട്രാക്ട് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് കോർട്ടിക്കോ ബൾബാർ ഓർ കോർട്ടിക്കോ ന്യൂക്ലിയർ ട്രാക്സ് ന വിൽ സി ഇറ്റ് കോർട്ടിക്കോ സ്പൈനൽ ട്രാക്ട് സി when you are talking about pyramidal tracts we are actually talking about cortico spinal tract so this can be used it's a very commonly used interchangeably cortico spinal tracts alle pyramidal tract nu parayumbo nammal uddheshikkana sadhana pyramidal tract nu nammal parayumbo uddheshikkana sadhana cortico spinal tracts okay cortico spinal peru pole thanne from the cortex down to the spinal cord now these are the fibers which are regulating the skilled voluntary actions of the human beings these are the most important descending tracts which are controlling the skilled voluntary actions of the our day to day lives now cortico spinal tracts are further divided into two groups we have uh, lateral cortico spinal tracts comprising of the 80% of the total fibers and anterior cortico spinal tracts comprising 20% of the total fibers how are these formed we will see now so cortico spinal tract ana nammala pyramidal tract nu parayumbo uddheshikkunnu most very commonly interchangeably used why this is the most important tracts which are controlling the skilled voluntary actions of the body now this is the cortico spinal tract so when we are describing a tract a descending tract we have to say what is the origin of these fibers what is the course taken by these fibers and how are these fibers terminating so see we have see a midline is shown and the left side of left hemisphere but left hemisphere are not seen right so considering the left hemisphere you see fibers are arising from the left hemisphere as shown here they are arising from the mod, uh, from the cortex now from which all portions are these fibers arising we have see avada kodutittunde area 4 area 4 is the primary motor cortex then uh, area 6 area 6 is the supplementary motor cortex then area 3 1 2 is primary somatosensory cortex so even from there all these portions of the brain the fibers are arising now after this first so fibers are arising from a very wide spread area these fibers are going to come down and they are converging into a very narrow portion of the brain that is an internal capsule okay as we can see if fibers if pala salathu ningana converge idu varumbo we can see something they have a radiating appearance the fibers will have a characteristic radiating appearance which is what we call as a corona radiata okay 
so fibers are coming from different parts of the brain they are uh, coming down they are converging into a very narrow portion that is the internal capsule so the corticospinal tracts pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule we can see they are converging down into the internal capsule posterior limb and they go through the pyramids of the medulla which is present anteriorly now as they reach the lower parts of medulla what happens as the fibers reach the lower part of medulla you can see uh, shown in the green 80% of these fibers are going to cross the midline towards the opposite side now this fibers since these fibers are arising from the left hemisphere this is going to cross to the right side and after crossing 80% of these fibers midline cross ida upper thought go it they will descend down laterally which forms the lateral corticospinal tract okay so this is where the two uh, groups of these fibers are formed on the lower part of medulla you can see 80% fibers in the m midline cross is upper thought to go laterally third row and they form the lateral corticospinal tract while the rest 20% will descend through the same side anteriorly it will descend through the same side anteriorly and this forms the anterior corticospinal tract okay so 80% are crossing which is forming the lateral corticospinal tract now anteriorly 20% of this fibers will continue down forming the anterior corticospinal tract so that's how these two groups are formed so now how are these terminating these fibers terminating considering lateral corticospinal tract we can see this uh, laterally descends down we know that motor uh, neurons are present in the anterior horn of the spinal cord or the ventral horn of the spinal cord a lateral corticospinal tract fibers are to come out they will be ending on the motor neurons in the anterior horn and the anterior horn motor neurons we can broadly classify them as medial group of motor neurons and the lateral group of motor neurons so we can see lateral corticospinal tract is terminating in the lateral group of motor neurons and this lateral group of motor neurons are innervating the distal muscles so muscles of the limbs is what they are innervating so lateral corticospinal tract is controlling the distal muscles of the body which is the muscles of the limbs what about the anterior corticospinal tract they are descending down through the same side they are terminating in a interneuron as we can see this interneuron what it does it will cross to the opposite side interneuron left la aninga left in the right lado cross cheyittu avade ulla medial motor neurons ne chenna innervate that's how it is done adhuvala thanne left la we can see anterior corticospinal tract chenna interneuron le terminate cheyum a few fibers from this interneuron will be innervating on the same side while the rest will cross the midline go to the opposite side it will terminate on the medial group of motor neurons and these medial motor neurons are innervating the proximal muscles so mostly regulating the posture so that's how these fibers are terminating so lateral group uh, lateral corticospinal tract will terminate on the lateral motor neurons which is uh, innervating the distal muscles well anterior corticospinal tract is indirectly via an interneuron terminating in the medial motor neurons which is innervating the postural muscles so that's about the origin we can see this origin again fibers are originating from the primary motor cortex area 4 alle avada parnu we in the motor cortex there are large pyramidal cells which are called as the cells of betts and these uh, cells of betts are uh, coming down as the the i mean the axons are coming down as the pyramidal tract or fibers of the pyramidal tract then the other areas we can see area 6 that is a supplementary motor cortex area 3 went to primary somatosensory cortex area 5 and 7 these are areas of the uh, parietal cord parietal lobe areas from the parietal lobe so from all these regions fibers are originating now what about the course of these fibers see it forms a corona radiator it is going down through the posterior limb at the lower part lower part le thumbu Uh, 80% fibers are crossed to the opposite side and they form the lateral corticospinal 20% same side could start to uh anterior corticospinal tract to now what is this decussation so you can see in the lower part of medulla there is something called as pyramidal decussation alle now the two side in the fibers are going to cross here all 80% fibers are crossing to each other forming the lateral corticospinal tract appo left hemisphere in the varuna uh, fibers left in the right lobe poonund right in varuna right in left lobe poonund appo now when these fibers are crossing these fibers tend to cross with each other and this 
forms what we call as a pyramidal decusation in the lower part of the medulla. The pyramidal decusation is formed by the intercrossing of the fibers of the corticospinal tract which is forming the lateral corticospinal tract. Okay. So that is about the course. Termination and Lateral corticospinal tract lateral motor neurons terminating. That is the control in distal limbs in control in and either corticospinal tract and medial motor neurons in the medium other posture and regulating. Now, what are the functions of this? The voluntary movements. Limbs, our limbs are under our voluntary control. And the lateral corticospinal tract is controlling our limbs. Hence, the voluntary control of our limbs is controlled, is uh, controlled by this. Lateral corticospinal tract or the corticospinal tract. That's why anterior corticospinal tract in the genome. Posteral muscles. It is not very significant because you know posture is uh, mainly regulated by our uh, what we say vestibular system. Vestibular center and posture regulated. You know, but uh, this also innervates the muscles, but not very significant. You can say. So that's about the functions on corticospinal tract so we have the origin cause and termination and functions of the corticospinal tract so this is the most important tract which is regulating our skilled voluntary actions as well as the pyramidal tract where a class of fibers under cortico bulba tracts or cortico nuclear tracts cortico nuclear tracts fibers are arising from the cortex and they are terminating in certain nuclei these are called as cortico nuclear tracts fibers arising from the cortex Cranial nerve nuclei on the brain stem. Brain stem like cranial nerve nuclei in the innovating the fibers under cortico bulbar or cortico nuclear tracts. One very common example is the facial nerve. You can see fibers are arising from the cerebral cortex, fibers are descending down, and fibers are crossing the midline, and it is innovating the facial nerve nucleus on the opposite side. And these fibers constitute of the corticonuclear tracts. You know that facial nerve nucleus is present in the lower part of bones, where the in the internal genu forms the abduction nerve nucleus and all. So it is upper e fibers from the cortex midline cross either uh, bones or the facial nerve ne chen innervating. And these fibers constitute the cortico bulbar or cortico nuclear tracts. So cortex or the brain stem where upon the fibers. So muscles of head and neck are usually innervating the class of fibers are cortico nuclear tracts and these fibers are forming the upper motor neurons of cranial nerves and what is an upper motor neuron what is a lower motor neuron you will see 